Welcome back to the Wayward Ornithopter YouTube channel. This video is an updated version of the Free Flight 3 flight plan walkthrough covering two new features that are introduced in version 3.9.21 on iOS and 3.9.23 on Android. Just to mention this assumes that you've updated your Free Flight 3 app on your phone or tablet and you've got the latest firmware on your drone and your sky controller. So as at the 1st of May 2016, that's version 3.2.0 for the Bebop and the Bebop 2. And if you have a sky controller, that needs to be on version 1.6.6. .6. So the two new features in flight plan are points of interest or POI and progressive courses. POI allows you to identify a fixed point and program your drone to keep it in the center of view as you pass by or around it. And progressive courses provide smoother flight plans when you are flying around a point of interest. So to start, let's fire up flight plan. Let's start with a new one. And simply choose which drone you're going to be flying with. In this case, it's a Bebop 2. Now a lot of this is going to be a refresher from the previous video on flight plan. So we start by creating a waypoint. And as you'll recall, tapping on the screen creates a waypoint in green. The number indicates the altitude and the arrow indicates the direction the drone and camera will be facing. By default it started off at 3 meters and I can edit that using the slider on the right. Or for greater precision press and hold the green waypoint, click on edit and type in the altitude you want. So let's go to 25 meters. The next waypoint I create will inherit its properties from the previous one. So this being waypoint one, the next waypoint I create will also be 25 meters altitude facing north. So I'm going to fly about 20 meters south to the second waypoint. All right. 12 meters. As you can see, the second waypoint is the same as the first waypoint. It also shows the course, and I can change two things about that course. As before, I can change the speed using the bottom slider. So if I tap on that line, it says it's running at 5 meters per second. I'm going to up that to 10 meters per second. You can adjust it to whatever you want. And as with waypoints for greater accuracy, press and hold, click edit, and type in the speed you want, 10 meters per second. But you notice when I clicked on that line and held, I've got the option to change from progressive course to constant course or progressive course and back again. For now, I'm going to leave it as a constant course. Just move that line directly due south and move it to 20 meters. That helps with my OCD. And what I want to do is program the drone to fly right round me as I'm standing at the takeoff point and keep the camera focused on me at all times. So in this instance, the first thing I'm going to do is just create a simple circular route. So tapping. 14 meters away, following the same characteristics. And if I click on that line, you'll see that that line is the same characteristics as the previous one, 10 meters per second. And at the moment, it's a constant course, but I'm going to change it to a progressive course. And you'll see it's done two things. One is it's added two smaller waypoints. And the other thing is it's given them a direction the same as the waypoint. That will come into play into a moment in a moment when we set a point of interest. But for now, another waypoint, another waypoint, another waypoint, just circulating around my takeoff point. Now what I want to do is create a point of interest, which is me. So I'm going to be standing at that takeoff zone. And to add a point of interest, simply press and hold where you want it. And there's the option to do a point of interest or close. 
Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close that so that the landing point is the same as the takeoff point. Before I do that, let me just adjust that a bit more precisely so that it's landing and taking off from the concrete slab. So close. So it will now land and take off from that point on the concrete slab in the middle of that field. It just saves getting grass and muck all over the lens. And it's a nice flat surface for landing. So back to pressing and holding and adding a point of interest. There's the point of interest. And as it happens, that's where I'm going to be standing. But I can move it round. That's where I'm going to be standing with the controller. The number three indicates three metres. Um, I'm two metres tall. Let's get it pointing at my head. So I can edit that by press and hold, edit, and change it to two metres. That two metres isn't the height that the drone flies at. It's the height of what it's pointing at. So if I zoom back out, one thing you'll notice is each of the waypoints has turned black. That indicates that they're currently pointing as per the waypoint. So when I first created the first waypoint, it was pointing due south, and each subsequent waypoint points to the next. But if I tap on one of those waypoints, it will turn blue. And as it does so, the arrow will point at the point of interest. And when I go to waypoint three, you'll notice that the two little arrows between waypoints two and three also point at the point of interest. And that's why progressive courses are helpful. It means that it doesn't just adjust the angle to point at the point of interest at each waypoint, it does it as it goes along. So changing waypoints four, five, six, seven, and so on, you'll see each of the arrows on the waypoints and the progressive course indicators point at that point of interest. That's it, I'm not too bothered about where it's uh, facing when it takes off. At waypoint one, it's gonna be looking due south, that's fine. And at waypoint 14, yeah, let's make waypoint 14 point at the uh, pilot point. I can now press the check mark on the top left corner. That means I've finished editing points of interest. But if I move that point of interest, you'll notice that all of the arrows on the waypoints and the intermediate progressive course points stay pointing at that point of interest. So there I'm done. I can go and click on the folder icon at the top right and save it. I can go into the detailed edit with the small icon third from the left at the top. And you can see there it's filming the whole time at 30 frames per second. Those are the red bits. The dark blue square means it takes off just before waypoint one. And the dark green square shows that it's going to land after waypoint 15. I can take that off. If I do that, then at the end of the flight plan, it will just hover at the height of 25 meters at waypoint 15. But what you will notice is previously you would set the camera's vertical angle using the green icon, the pale green icon at the top right, and dragging it down to the bottom row. But in the bottom row, the blue markers indicate that the camera angle is determined by the point of interest. So however high or low the drone is, it will keep pointing at that point in space, in this instance, two meters above the point of interest. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna lock it and I'm gonna go back. I can now save that. Save as POI test. What I can now do is show you one I prepared earlier. Open that. And you can see this is one that I flew earlier this morning and it's on the same place as before. I'd set the point of interest at three meters as you get as again as before. If I move that point of interest, ah, it's locked. Press the padlock at the top left to unlock it. I can move that round and all of the view arrows on the points of interest and the waypoint will keep pointing at that. 
So let's have a look at that in action. It's taken off from the uh, start point, flying due south down to the bottom of that almost a clock dial of the flight plan. So it's now at the bottom waypoint and the camera has automatically adjusted to point roughly at my head and it's now flying from waypoint 2 to waypoint 3 and travelling all the way around that clock face. The altitude of the drones changing but it's keeping a focus by adjusting the camera angle so that it's constantly looking at the point of interest. In this case my piloting area and now it's coming into land. So let's take a look at a slightly more sophisticated flight plan, flying in the same area, but in this case, flying and having a look around that lake on the golf course, and then flying back to me to the original takeoff zone, and flying around a second point of interest, namely the pilot zone. So let's open the point of interest flight that I created earlier and as you can see there are two points of interest and on the first one you'll have seen that the colour coding showed us sort of a teal green colour for the point of interest. When you create another one it will colour code it differently. So to look into the detail of this point of interest 2 is where I'm piloting from. But it's not the first point of interest. Waypoint 1 is here, flying from waypoint 1 to 2, climbing from 5 metres to 75 metres altitude to clear those trees there and fly up north, get to near the lake, at which point I have a point of interest, the middle of the lake, 3 metres above the surface and the teal coloured waypoints, as you can see, the arrows are all pointing towards the lake. And they continue to do that right round from waypoints three through to waypoint eight. When it goes back to a constant course rather than a progressive course, flies due south at 75 metres to clear those trees then drops down to 5 metres at waypoint 11 and then where I've created the second waypoint 2 metres above the pilot area it flies round from waypoints 12 right through to waypoint 19. So let's have a look at that in action. So looking at that flight plan that I saved, here it is flying through on a wet day where the idiot didn't wipe the lens to start with, <coughs> so apologies for the blotches on the screen, but now it's taking off from waypoint 1, facing due east, climbing from 5 metres to the second waypoint, which is 75 metres altitude, then turn on a bearing due north, we'll fast forward this bit until it gets just to the east side of the lake. Then it'll pick up the point of interest and the camera is now turned to the left and pivoted down to look at a spot three metres above the surface of the lake. And it's now following those waypoints that you can see as teal coloured on the flight plan. And I'm impressed that the progressive course does give it a very smooth curve. The only way to get that before with flight plan was to have lots and lots of waypoints, one every couple of metres, so that it wasn't such a jerky turn every time it hit a waypoint and swivelled. So now, with those progressive courses, it's much, much smoother. So now it's getting back to the 
final waypoint on the point of interest and the drone will start flying due south it's still facing north until it gets to the next waypoint and when it gets to the next waypoint it'll turn due south to southwest and start descending from 75 meters down to 5 meters so I've just speeded this up a little here but it's flying due south to southwest and as soon as it drops down to 5 meters it'll pick up the first of the waypoints focused on the point of interest and there we are it's now <coughs> at 5 meters and it's picked up the point of interest just there and of course with flight plan it allows you on a cold day to fly with your hands in your pockets and it's now going through that tight circle that's marked in pink and at this point I take control bring it down for a landing Voila. So to summarise, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your drone, and if you're using a sky controller, your sky controller are on the latest version of the firmware. Use free flight and flight path to set waypoints for where you want your drone to fly, and set the point of interest at the location and altitude that you want the drone to fly around. I hope you found that useful. Please like this and subscribe and I'll see you the next time around. Thank you.